Hi, I am Marius Peters and in this short video I'm going to give you an introduction to what quality by design means and how this is linked to process analytical technologies. So if you're looking for a career in the pharmaceutical industry or if you're for instance studying chemical engineering, these are really important topics. So I'll go over some of the terms that you might come across. Examples will follow in later videos. So let's compare what is the normal process and how is quality by design different. So when quality by design means that you have an inbuilt quality control. If you just look at your normal process, you will see that it works, that you have a quality control step at the end. You produce your product, you test whether the quality is okay, and then you release it. So that means that you have relatively little understanding of the system because you don't know so much about the variables that actually affect the quality of your product and what process parameters are important. Now for a normal uh, production of a product, this is probably okay. Because it doesn't matter so much that there's like a short period where you uh, have to wait until you release it. And also you can perhaps afford to have a little bit more variation in your product. Now, if you think of it in a pharmaceutical industry, this is actually quite different. If you would have variations in your product, you think of variations in drugs, in vaccines, this would make a very, very big difference. So that's why quality by design gives you that extra additional insight into your process. So what you do instead, you have a flexible process that can be adapted rather than something which is rigid and fixed. So this is where I meant that you have your quality control inbuilt. So what you actually have to do, you have to determine parameters that are important for your process. And you control these quite tightly within the design space. So if we look at the terminology and what QBD means, you will see that this is a systemic approach. So you look at the whole process. So it's not just the process, how you kind of produce a pharmaceutical linear reactor. It goes across the whole chain. So purification, separation, but also packaging. And when you look at tablets, for instance, the excipients that you mix in are equally as important. So the whole distribution chain itself. It is a risk management approach. Uh, because what you will do, you see here the difference between the fixed and the responsive process. Um, you will have less likely that there's more variation in your products, so particularly for super pharmaceuticals, you can imagine why that's important. And it also gives you a better and more sound understanding of how the process actually works. And therefore, there are two terms that you really need to know. So you have critical quality attributes, so QCA, so what are important attributes that contribute towards the quality, and the critical process parameters. So what parameters, so think of, for instance, the pH, the temperature, um, you can also look at certain ways of how you separate things, what parameters in your process define the final quality of the product. So first you will have to figure out how many of these important parameters you have. So if you go back to, I did a, a video on modeling as well, where we look at principal component analysis and PLS, you will see this is tightly linked to multivariate analysis, because obviously you can control a certain number of parameters, but you don't, ideally you don't want to control 20. So what you try and do is really reduce it down to what are only the essential critical process parameters. Once you know what they are, you can define a certain design space. So that means you set up the specs into what range you can tolerate it before it starts to influence the quality. So for certain process parameters, that might be quite a wide range, but think of, for instance, pH, where uh, microorganisms are extremely sensitive to pH. This might actually be quite narrow. So it depends on the parameter that you're dealing with. So within the pharmaceutical industry, quality by design is relatively new. It wasn't until 2004 where the FDA recommended the use of process analytical technologies, or PAT, which we'll come back to later and how that feeds into the use of sensors into quality by design. However, the terms are not so new itself. If you look at design space, which I said was like the, the range that you can have or the variation you can have in your process parameters, or within your critical quality attributes, this was already documented in the 1950s. Now, the person who coined the term and who published some very influential papers in the 1990s was Joseph Duran, and that kind of started roughly around the 70s. So you can see there was quite a bit of delay in actually kind of getting this to the FDA. Um, and, but now this is common practice within the pharmaceutical industry, even though for other industries, 
this implementation because you can imagine it takes time. Uh, there's also a lot of resources that go into understanding your process. So they're not implemented as widely as just within the pharmaceutical industry. Now let's say you wanted to implement QBD principles. There's a very specific workflow that you will need to follow. So the first step that you start off with is your target product profile. So think of the profile or the characteristics of your product that is aimed at a particular disease needs to have. Once you have that, you can start to have a think about what potentially might be critical process parameters or CQAs or other things that you need to have a look at. But in the other hand, you will need to have done some uh, preliminary experiments and you will have used some sensors to actually see whether you might think that this is a critical process parameter, but it might not be as important as you think. So first you will need to optimize your experiments or do some small experiments and figure out which ones, and this is usually done at smaller scale, to define these critical process parameters. Now, first of all, you need to think about what variation in product you're able to tolerate. Uh, particularly when you look at pharmaceutical products, I think you can imagine that this is quite a narrow range. When does it start to become dangerous? There are also certain diagrams that you can use. You might know this more under a fishbone diagram, an Ishikaya diagram, where you start to look at what are the risks of certain parameters. So you can think of, for instance, and this kind of goes wider than beyond your traditional processes. So this is also often used in the business industry, where you also need to consider the environment that you're working on, not just the process itself. When you think of your design space, you will, based also on your risk assessments, you will think about the variation that you're allowed to tolerate before it starts to compromise product quality and what the potential impact could be for patients. Now here again, some of them might be have like a relatively wide range, some of them are more narrow. But you will need to implement certain sensors in order to make sure that you stay within that specific range. Now, because this process quality by design, it's supposed to be in real time. So you're supposed to get very fast feedback. So what you want to do is either measure in situ, which is really complicated for lots of bioreactor processes, or at least you want to look at inline monitoring where you get a very quick result. So there's only a certain number of sensors that can actually fulfill these requirements and don't really need sophisticated lab analysis. And we'll come back to that when we discuss process analytical technologies. Once you know the design space, we also need to think about the control strategy. So how do you make sure that you stay within that design space? There's a, a number of very common feedback loops. You probably are most familiar with PID feedback loops, where for instance, if you have a temperature, you set it at a certain range and you stay within that range. But there's also controls where you have on-off strategies and there's lots of other strategies that you can implement. And finally, you have your control strategy, you have a good understanding of your process, which probably would have happened by doing some preliminary experiments. But after that, the key, key thing that comes by quality by design is that you're continuously supposed to improve it. So as you start to produce more of your product, you will actually gather more data, so you will get more insight into the process itself. And this is fundamental within QBD, that you start to learn and you train people in how you can improve your product cycle. Now, I work in sensors and you will see that this is a very critical aspect of quality by design. And the way this works is by using process analytical technologies. And this was defined in that FDA document, which was released in 2004. Now actually what it does, you control your manufacturing process by measuring these critical process and parameters. So these are the ones that can actually affect your critical quality attributes at the end. And remember, this was a fast process, so typical sensors that you will have come across are for instance, infrared spectroscopy, near-infrared spectroscopy is very commonly used for tablets, for instance. You can look at Raman, you can look at certain type of biosensors, uh, but you are a little bit limited because it needs to be like a fast sensor and ideally you want to measure it on site as well. As you do this, and because it is so fast, you will generate big data. You will generate a lot of data, so you need to have operators that are trained in how you understand that process. So in order to, to do that, you can either use principal component analysis, which is a method of condensing your data, 
or you can use other methods, for instance, such as PLS, in order to make sense of what's happening. And this is combined with multivariate analysis techniques. You will be able to look at your data, see what is happening, and then that will feed into your control strategy. So once you control it, you look at your measurement data, and in real time, you can make adaptations to your process, such as, for instance, changing the pH, changing the temperatures, in order to make sure that your product quality isn't affected. So here I've given a very brief summary of what quality by design is and how this is really an inbuilt quality control, which is recommended by the FDA for use in the pharmaceutical industry. I've gone through some very key concepts. So think of, for instance, critical process parameters, critical quality attributes, target product profile, and process analytical technologies, which was related to sensors, and then finally also your design space, which is the space into which you can operate. So you will see that sensors play a very fundamental part within quality by design, and they're really necessary to fully understand your system. And by understanding your system, you can start to continuously improve your production process. So if you want to know more about this, I'm going to give some case studies later where you can see how this is really important to improve the efficacy of your process, but also to guarantee safety of your process.